Open Teen action here at the Toyota Soccer Center. A big one to close out day one U17 action. David Goss and former professional Bobby Warshaw here. And Bobby, the fourth game of day one here in U17 play. And man, we have seen some pretty impressive games. It's been a fantastic event so far. It's one of the more special tournaments that we get all year. And it's such a fantastic opportunity, David, not just for the clubs and the coaches, but most importantly for the players to play these teams, to take on this international competition is a great chance for them to both show the world what they can do, but also grow as part of their developmental pathway. And they have been itching to get out there on the field, and they will start in this first game. Their first of three group stage games, 10 groups. So the winner of each group will move in to the round of 16. The six best second place teams will also move on, Bobby. So there's not a lot of room to make mistakes, and there's not a lot of room to have to catch up. One of the objectives of Generation Divas Cup is to add that pressure to the these players to replicate as best as possible that feeling in your stomach that you get as a professional player with people watching with the tv crews there with the real stakes of the game and especially with a game like today two big names lafc versus flamengo a lot on the line and you see the format there 30 minute halves flamengo against lafc let's take a look at our starting lineups and let's start Bobby with the home side in this one technically LAFC the black and gold Diego Rosales the Las Vegas lights player in at center back and a lot of attack up front in Wilcott Diaz as well as Alexson Sukup a ton of excitement around this LAFC team on the flip side for Flamengo Bobby one of the best youth producers and one of the best soccer nations on the planet they are and we've seen how successful they've been in previous GA Cups they will attack and what will look like a 4-3-3 but then but defensively it will be a rock solid 4-4-2 and keep an eye on the number nine any Brazilian number nine is dangerous this one included Camargo up top will be the key man for Flamengo well, Camargo a big piece of that as Bobby said that 4-3-3 attack let's take a look at our star player on the flip side for this LAFC group and there will be attacking talent there'll be goals but you wanted to key on Brian Moriado in central midfield well when you play the way that LAFC have shown they want to play you need someone at the base of that midfield triangle who can get on the ball who can play forward who can organize your counter press Brian Moyato can do all of those things if he's good today it will drive LAFC in all of the phases so we enter our final game of U17 day one action here at field four as you see the number 26 there Brian Moyato part of that midfield three for this LAFC side group a is the spot for these two teams Philadelphia Union already knocking off Weston FC out of Florida 1-0 in their first game so Philly sitting on top with three points and Bobby these two teams coming out here to set the tone Flamengo coming in as one of the pre-tournament favorites they are and one thing we've heard David about Generation Adidas Cup is the ability for these major league soccer clubs to bench them benchmark themselves against the world best everyone knows the, the world Flamengo in the world market they understand what their players can do and what they are worth and now it's up to MLS teams and players to show that they can play that level that they can exceed that level to show clubs and teams around the world what Major League Soccer players can offer. We are kicked off. Flamengo in their classic red stripes with black in their jerseys going right to left on your monitors. LAFC in the cream white kits going left to right on your screens. The first half, 30 minute halves, a 60 minute game coming up here and immediately the Meg from Gustavo Jancelo. That Brazilian sauce coming out early, David. And one thing we've come to know about Flamengo teams at GA Cup is the presence that they have down the spine. We see the size of the center backs and of the center striker. Always a threat on these set pieces. And when you think of a Brazilian team, you think of the flair that they bring. But make no mistake about it, this Flamengo team is rock solid defensively and always a threat on set pieces. It'll be Junior to take this one. Standing over it with Mateus. See if it's the left foot or the right foot. It is the left foot of Mateus. Dropped in. Headed over to the far side. And it's Camargo to chase it down. And Camargo will let it run for the throw in. It's an opportunity deep in the attacking third for Flamengo to try and set the tone early here. We saw River Plate 
in our opening game here today. Score in the fourth minute. And that one really set the way the game was played up as Carbone. Taking that one under possession. On side, Iago at center back. AFC going to get a touch on the ball here, and it is Moyada the first to do it. Now Ayub dropping it back. Diaz looking to push forward. Ayub in a battle. And the foul will go against him. The first whistle of the game for our head official, Shea Yinka Kehinde. A more reserved start than we've seen in most games of GA Cup so far, David. For me, that's a sign of the respect that both teams have for each other. It's more of a feel-out phase. Limit the risk. Don't expose yourself and let the other team take advantage of it. And Bobby, it was interesting talking to Todd Saldana, the academy director of LAFC, before the game, and he said we got caught up for a little bit talking about all the talent that's come out of Flamengo, all the talent they produce. And he said we had to look at ourselves and say, we're pretty good at this, too. We've got some quality in this team as well. It's always a fear, and I had this happen so many times as a player, when you get the scouting report from the other team, hey, be careful, they do this well, this player excels in this way, and you think to yourself, oh, crap, this team is good. And you always need that reminder that you're on this field for a reason as well. And LAFC, coming into this tournament, everyone around the country said that this is one of the teams to watch, both for the individual players and for their team quality. So, you're great point, David. They absolutely have the talent to match what Flamengo can bring right now. We've got winds at 25 miles per hour consistently here in Frisco, Texas. Gusts of up to 40 miles per hour over the course of the day coming from behind that LAFC goal across the field. So left to right on your screens. And Bobby, it has been a factor over which team has really been in possession, been in the ascendancy a lot of the games we've seen. It has. And for the most part, when we see a team have the wind at their back like LAFC, like LAFC do, we see a full out press as high as possible. But LAFC has taken a slightly different approach. They've started in a mid block waiting for, them for, for Flamengo to step forward before they initiate their pressure. And so far, it's worked. Flamengo has not been able to get out of their half bar the one set piece. So Binden to take that free kick and immediately Hernandez is attacking the other way, the right back. Yeah, he's been aggressive so far in this game. LAFC win it back. Binden all the way back to Sonthala. David, for anybody who has watched the LAFC first team at the MLS level, you can expect more of the same at the under-17 level. They are a club that has done an excellent job of building a game model all the way down from the first team to the younger ages. Similar principles of play, similar ideas, the same terminology, so that they are preparing players when they are 15 and 17 to integrate seamlessly into the first team level. Long throw into the box. Knocked down. Cleared away by... Nakagawa. Bobby, how important is that? Not just to have that identity, but also then examples for these players of every week you are watching a Carlos Velo or a Latif Blessing and saying, that's how it's done. Well, when you look around the world market, David, effectively any time a key player moves from one team to another, it's about only a 50% chance of success rate. That's mm -hmm. for even the most expensive and the best players in the world. And it's similar when you have to move up to an academy. You don't want to feel like you're moving from your under-17 team to the professional team and you're moving to a new team altogether. Mm -hmm. It should be the same words, the same ideas, the same tactical instructions, just in a slightly different environment, maybe on a different training field. So the less you can make a change for a player that has to for them to adapt to, the more likely it is going to be a chance of success. Mango. Continuing to apply a little bit of pressure here to open things up. And Bobby, before I came to this generation disc up and, and worked with you, I didn't understand when you said buzzwords. The terms teams use, how unique it is, and of course soccer, not a lot of time to really communicate and talk to each other as Flamengo are in the attack now. Opportunity to get a cross away, they do. It's knocked down in the box. LAFC now looking to play out. They turn it over in a dangerous spot. Camargo looking for the shot. He hits the post. And it comes back to the feet of Diaz. First big chance of the game here for Flamengo. And Moyado makes the tackle to clear things away. And now LAFC are on the attack. Jacob Diaz puts it by the center back. 
He's got runners coming in, and his cross is cleared into the sky. It started on one end with Camargo, the Flamengo number nine, getting on the turn, getting his left foot across it, but just pulls it, hits the post, and immediately LAFC go out on transition through Diaz the other way and pin back Flamengo into their own end. I love this little moment at the end of the play, by the way. It was, went out for a throw in, a little close, and Ayub just took it like it was a corner until the referee tells him not to. All those little moments that you have to appreciate from these young players. And now it is a corner kick for LAFC. Our first corner kick with LAFC using the wind. And it's always something to keep an eye on here at GA Cup. We've seen a variety of tactics from teams to both balance what they've been working on for months in their set piece routine, but also take the clear advantage that the wind offers going straight into the goal mount. So corner kick coming here. It will be Ayub to serve it. Floats it towards the far post over the head of Diaz. Is there another chance in this one for LAFC. The cross played into the near post, put straight up in the sky. It'll be another corner kick. David, what we saw in this first one was Flamengo going a primary zone approach with only two man markers. And those man markers near the top of the box are only designed to put off the runners. The person that they are not marking, again, because the majority of their players are in a zone, is LAFC number 29, Diego Rosales. If he can somehow peel to the back post free away from that zone, he's the player to keep an eye on for LAFC. It's Carlos Diaz, the left back, to come across and take this one. Rosales lurking at the far post. The cross played in. It's knocked wide. Diaz runs it down. Diaz 1v1 on the wing. And he misses his teammate with the pass back. LAFC able to keep it in control. Nakagawa goes all the way back to the goalkeeper's feet. And the long ball over the top will bring possession back to Flamengo. Maybe a little frustratingly for LAFC. So a back and forth start between these two teams here in the opening 10 minutes. Beautiful turn there from Junior. Junior now attacking into the space. The left footed cross bobbles up on him and flies to the far post. You see, are able to scoop that one away. Now trying to pressure that Flamengo back line. Alex Salas, oh, excuse me. It was Sukup stepping up the pressure there. Bobby, what a turn there from Junior. Threats as we consistently see from Flamengo U sides coming from those wingers. And when you play against a block that LAFC is doing, and you're Flamengo trying to build through it, there's obviously two basic options. Can you find the defensive midfielder and carve through the middle, or do you take the advantage that LAFC is giving you out wide? Because in your block, the two rules are nothing behind and nothing through the middle, meaning that a wide player like Wilcott here, number 27 on LAFC, is going to let Flamengo come outside of him. So does Flamengo try and pull numbers wide, go from the center back to the left back and again to junior, or do they go through the defensive midfield? That's the back and forth that these teams are trying to play against each other. Iago striding forward. Now wide for Silva. So far, Flamengo's clearly taking the 2v2 that comes with that outside back winger combination against LAFC. He has beaten by that one, to that one by Iago. LAFC's U15 dominant 3-1 performance yesterday here on this field to open things up at U15 level. Another U17 trying to step up and do the same. Rosales has it knocked away. Is one of the players playing with and training with Las Vegas Lights. It's their final season in the USL Championship. Now Gustavo steps forward. Camargo, he already hit the post in this game. That one stays in play. And will cycle all the way back through Victor. The cross comes in. 
Knocked up in the box. Mango. Dictating right now. And Junior not able to get that one under control. But David, you saw the aggression there from Brian Moyato stepping out of midfield, putting his shoulder into the Flamengo player. It doesn't work out there. But as Flamengo has control, it'll be important to make sure LAFC to use the line we heard from Jesse Marsh in the famous halftime video at Salzburg to make sure that they feel you. When you're struggling in a game, when you're playing elite competition, it's always important that they feel your presence, that they don't think and have grow the confidence that they can just play through you every time. So Moyato making an important stand. It didn't come off, but to show the physicality there. Group A action here at Toyota Soccer Center. David Goss and Bobby Warshaw with you for this LAFC Flamengo match. We've also got our sideline reporter here, Matt Peterson. Matt, down to you. Hey guys, thank you. Very simple instructions from the LAFC coaching staff. Stop playing the back pass to their goalkeeper. We've seen a few in this first half. Everyone back to the goalkeeper has been kicked long. It's been a turnover right back to Flamengo. Thanks so much, Matt. LAFC trying to find that possession right now. Trying to, you talked about it in the open, find that fundamental. Yeah, when you're, when you are LAFC using a block against Flamengo, when Flamengo turns it over, which you're waiting for, you're waiting for those mistakes, the entire point of that defensive approach is to them hit them quickly in transition. So if you regain possession and go back to your goalie, it takes away the advantage that you've worked so hard and defended right. so hard to gather. So a little bit of blood there on the knee for Carbone. Carbone, Carbone going for the camouflage approach. It was. With the Red Sox. It was a veteran move from him. Nakagawa into the feet of Moyada. Ayub lays it back. Diaz floating it out wide. Opportunity here for LAFC. And it's a fingertip save for the quarter kick. But a blueprint combination from the LAFC midfield. Go from the defensive midfielder, break the line, bounce back, forward again, up, back, through, attack the space on the wing. And a great first touch from Sukup on the left side. LAFC. Finding their rhythm through the midfield, building their patterns. LAFC is starting to get a little bit of traction here as Flamengo has dictated much of this first half. Diaz plays it in, knocked down in the box. Junior heads it out. And now Flamengo immediately attack with numbers. But Nakagawa keeps it in for a moment and puts it out for the throw in. Bobby, you just see when Flamengo knocks that ball out. It's just a wave of red and black coming up the field. Iago rises up on that header. Now Silva trying to play through the middle, but it's turned over. And Rosales will restart the attack. Diaz up the line for Sukup, who just had a dangerous shooting opportunity. Instead of to the goalkeeper, we see it come across the back line for LAFC. And Nakagawa not able to keep it under possession. And LAFC coach talking to Tyler Bingen. Now, David, you and I have been doing GA Cup for a while. We've seen a lot of international teams. And there's always two truisms about what we see from their lineups and their style of play. What would you say those two truths are about GA Cup International teams? River Plate will always play a 4-4-2, and that Flamengo will play 1 through 11 in the numbers that the ancient British people put together for what those position numbers mean. You do love a classic 1 to 11 on the field. What I'll add to that about Flamengo, too, is that always imposing center backs. When we talk about game model alignment, it's so clear it's part of who they want to be at the younger ages but they always have physically imposing center backs that make life hard for opposing attackers and are a threat on set pieces. Free kick coming here. This team throwing a wrinkle, a number 16 out there in the starting lineup. I'll allow it for now, but Flamengo, they have been a perennial contender since they have started coming to Generation Adidas Cup. River Plate, the other who has won the most championships. Junior steps over it, lays it back. The ball chipped into the box, knocked down. Claims for handball. And it's cleared away. As Shea Yinka Kehute, our head referee, right on top of that one. And that will be a free kick for LAFC. Now, 
David, we've seen LAFC weather this Flamengo storm over the first 15 minutes. We always know that a club like Flamengo or River Plate will try and impose their physicality on the game and overwhelm the opponent. And it usually works, but LAFC, to their credit, have weathered the storm. They've made it through these first 15 minutes, which would be the objective. And now it's how can they impose their ideas? How can they get on the ball, play through the lines? And this one coming out wide for Sue Cup. He's shown how dangerous he is already once in this first half. Has it knocked away and out for a corner kick coming here for LAFC. Midway through this first half, 30-minute half, 60-minute games here in the group stage of the Generation Adidas Cup. U-17 competition, our final game at the U-17 level of the day. Group A, LAFC against Flamengo. David Goss, Bobby Warshaw, Matt Peterson with you for this one. The corner kick coming in. Headed away at the near post. Second chance driven through the box. It'll take a deflection and out for a corner kick. It was Alex Salas with the drive. And good contact from Salas on that. How often do we see that second ball on a corner kick? Skied over the goal, stays over it, actually waits for the extra bounce. Well done from Salas. It'll be Ayub to take it once again. The service has been dangerous so far from that far side. Curls this one to the far post. Knocked back by Diaz. He got his chest to it. And it found its way into the hands of Santos. But a similar routine, David. LAFC will always have the extra man because Flamengo is committing numbers to the zone. Once again, they find that player back post and a well-delivered ball to find the free man. You don't often see a player chest a free kick or a corner kick down at the far post. A header would have brought that back across goal, no? I'm a big fan of the power chest, David. Never down. You downplay the power chest at the same risk of downplaying the toe poke. Listen, as someone who can't control the ball, I'll always chest it down for a teammate next to me, but normally in the run of play, not alongside the goal. My touch is always better for you. I agree with that. We are here on Twitch as well as on the MLS YouTube page. We've got four more games coming up tomorrow on Monday from 10 a.m. Eastern Time all the way through 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got Columbus Crew against Tijuana, San Jose against River Plate, RSL versus Tigres, and Monterey against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Sonsalia plays that one long. Iago rising up over Diaz to win the first header. Now Mateus, the captain, trying to bring it down. He'll earn the free kick, and he'll go quickly. Now, David, one little micro battle to keep an eye on in this game, which we just saw an example of, was Jacob Diaz's ability, number 35, as a striker, center striker for LAFC, to hold the ball up, or at least disrupt the Flamengo center backs on those balls into the second layer, particularly with early contact. We see veteran... Veteran center strikers, whether it's a Rongo for LAFC or Chicharito for Galaxy, make contact first, especially with bigger center backs, to put them off so at least it bounces for a second ball instead of a power header. So keep an eye on Diaz's ability to make early contact and bring his teammates into it for second balls. Ayub battling with Mateo. Sukup comes back to win it for his side. Good start to this game for Sukup. He loses that 50-50, and now Flamengo... Starting to churn in the attack. Nakagawa clears it away from the right back spot. And back in by Carbone. Pushed out wide for Mateus. And the slide tackle from Diaz. He puts it out for the corner kick. And here, David, to that point, talking about LAFC having an outlet, which will grow in importance when they play against the wind and have to try and break Flamengo's press. The LAFC coaching staff making a point to Jacob Diaz. You have to jump. You have to disrupt them so the ball doesn't come just back down the mm -hmm. throat. Because remember, Diaz doesn't need to win the ball. People don't expect him to win the ball against these powerful center backs. Just disrupt them enough so that it doesn't come right back down you. Again, a micro battle that will be very important to the, to the larger result. Corner kick coming for Flamengo here. And the 10 minutes of the first half. This one floated into the box. And Diaz wins that one over Iago. Battle still in the box, and somehow Flamengo not able to get that one directed on goal, and it's out for another corner kick. 
And this is exactly what you want to see from Diaz, David. Because look, as it comes up, he actually even jumps into the opposition. He doesn't just go up. He angles his jump into the Flamengo player, either win it or bump them off. A wonderful step forward from Diaz on that play. Going to kick coming again for Flamengo from the opposite side this time. Ball played in. Salanthea with the punch. Second bite at it coming. It'll be Junior getting to the end line. He's got an opportunity to pick his head up. It's blocked by Sukup. LAFC cleared out for a moment. Flamengo have been impressive. So far in this one, you hear the horns coming up behind us. A number of LAFC and Flamengo fans in attendance here at the Toyota Soccer Center. A number of other games going on around us as well. And the best part of the week, David, is seeing how the crowds grow for games that they hear have the buzz to come watch. There's always a vibe to the park right now, and you know which are the best games going on. And as you get to the 20th, 40th minute, the crowds grow. Hear the hype of Flamengo LAFC. Hernandez stepping in. Watch out there! Watch out there! Flamengo flying forward. That one gets by both Junior and Nakagawa. Kept in by Flamengo. And it'll roll out for a goal kick for LAFC question in the chat who's top of the group this is the first day of under 17 action here at generation Adidas cup so they're just developing the progress in the groups philadelphia won their first game they've got three points over weston but this is the first team both of these teams are playing appreciate the question though tom you can go to mlssoccer.com for all the standing score updates as they come in pretty immediately after games that we're not broadcasting come back come on finish and we will get you a ton of those scores and some standing updates as we go along here today more u15 action coming up tonight here at the toyota soccer center so for anyone who's watching yesterday go to mlssoccer.com to sort of see the updates as those teams move along especially this lafc u15 group who was maybe as impressive as any team we saw yesterday bobby in their win over leon We've had a nice dynamic of MLS versus Liga Emeki's matchup so far. And LAFC really put their stamp on it. Using the ball. Really passing Leon off the field in that matchup. Let's go down to our sideline reporter, Matt Peterson. Matt, down to you. Hey, thank you. Bobby talked about the imposing center backs for Flamengo and the LAFC coaching staff have noticed. They're telling Jacob Diaz, a center forward, you have to go up and challenge these balls in the air. He hasn't done it enough. They've also said avoid that trap ball, the ball to the right midfield, right around the strike. That is where Flamengo has looked to press and LAFC has tried to play out of the back to the wide areas. Diaz now breaking into the goal. He has it taken away at the last possible moment. Thanks so much to Matt for that one. As Salas lays it off once again, Rosales can't keep that one in play. Bobby, like you talked about for Diaz. Now, it's interesting, though. You brought up Chicho Arango. But Arango, different builds, right? Short or smaller, but physically built out. Diaz normally is, I think, that big, tall center forward. And so this is a whole new matchup experience for him as Camargo gets on the other side there of Nakagawa. Cross played in. Cleared away by Binden. And a foul will go for Flamengo here. Could be a dangerous set piece chance for them on the left side. Off the middle third. Flamengo knocking it around, Bobby. Obviously, the giant in Brazil. Copa Libertadores champions over the last few years. They claim they are bigger than the church. 40 million official fans in Brazil. They come in as one of the favorites. Bobby, what other international clubs stand out here at this U-17 competition? Well, we've already mentioned the array of Liga Mackey's teams. Always good at the youth level and, of course, at the professional level. We also have here Roma, Manchester United, Valencia, River Plate. Those are the teams that stand out to you, I both, assume. Both 
giants at the professional level, but also known for their youth development as well. Yeah, absolutely. Celtic are here at the U17, U15 level as well. You mentioned AS Roma. They're one of the teams that teams that people are very excited to see at this competition. So a number of international teams, a, a lot of different styles in this one as that cross is knocked down. And Bobby, when you talk to the academy directors, the coaches, that is the biggest part of this competition for them. As Mateus now, the captain into the attack. Junior takes the shot first time, and it's saved. A deflection, and then a big save from Santhalia. So good from Santhalia. Sees it late, still gets down and low to his left, and then strong enough risk to tip it around the post. And now a corner kick coming once again as you see the replay there. Headed away at the near post. The ball screwed back out wide. Good physical challenge and we'll have our first yellow card of the game. And it comes to Jacob Diaz. And David, there's a common theme there that you'll hear of Diaz being over aggressive, mm -hmm. the players moving backward. But I think if you put that in the context of what we've seen before, really getting out muscled by the Flamengo center backs the last few plays, he wants to demonstrate to himself and everyone watching that he can match their physicality. Mm -hmm. So you can understand what's going through his mind to try and be an aggressive as aggressive in that moment as possible. Yeah, so often you see it that way where a player trying to reach that physicality level goes a little bit over that line that first time. But as you start to find where you need to be to win these challenges. We approach halftime here. 30 minute half, 60 minute games. Seven subs available for these coaching staffs. But they can make in three different moments in the second half. Halftime won't count as one of those moments. Junior Mateus. Mateus hits that one. It drops in the box. And a foul called on the push. Bobby. LAFC, they've had the wind at their backs. It hasn't been maybe as strong as we've seen throughout. What will they make of their first half performance? Maybe what's the focus at halftime? I would say that they'll feel proud of this first half performance so far. You play a club like Flamengo, who both at the professional and the youth level Flamengo been, claims for a handball there. Have been so successful, and really they do it by coming to these games using their bravado, using their experience, and imposing themselves on the game, and often overwhelming opponents in the first 15 minutes. But LAFC hung in there. They matched the intensity, they matched the maturity, okay. and have found ways to play their soccer in this. So if you're LAFC, you're both proud of what you're doing, but also recognize that the way this is game is going, Mango has a slight advantage, and you do need to make some adjustments. How can they play forward and still connect passes and bring the team into it? And on the flip side for Flamengo, you have to think they like what's happened so far and continue to push. You heard those claims from Flamengo for that handball on that build out of the back on Rosales. That ball popping up off his foot. Oh, yes, we've said this is a huge opportunity for everyone involved, the, the coaches, the scouts, as well as the referees. We don't have VAR here until the final when we are in Toyota Stadium. Those referees out there sort of on their own, and that is the final whistle. No stoppage time, and even first half, toe-to-toe. -to -toe, LAFC, one of the Giants in MLS, a youth scene against Flamengo, one of the great talent producers in the world and one of the favorites coming in to this competition. We'll have a little bit more about youth development here at halftime and then we'll have a first half highlights and second half action coming up in just a moment on Twitch on the MLS YouTube channel from Frisco, Texas. It's 2022 Generation Adidas Cup U17 action. As players and coaches continue evolving towards a brighter future, 
The constant battle of reality versus expectation is one many involved in youth soccer constantly face. The reality being, developing a player to transcend and become a professional is a long road indeed. A U12 player might not make our U13 team the following year. And so we, we made that very clear at the beginning that this is uh, the pyramid moves in this direction and it gets harder and harder to get to the top and the grand minority earn a professional contract and the grand minority play on the first team. Luchi Gonzalez, the academy director at FC Dallas, knows all too well the struggles within an academy structure to develop players. But the key to success for Luchi and FC Dallas isn't only about the on-field product. It always transcends more than just that. We don't see our first team at the top. We see FC Dallas family at the top. They, they're trying to develop to be an FC Dallas family member for the rest of their life. So that they, they, whether they play in our stadium or not, or whether they play in Europe, or whether they play in our senior national team, or whether they play college, or whether they're going to be a doctor, or whether they're going to be a teacher, or whether they're going to be a coach themselves, they're always going to be welcome to our stadium as a fan and as a family member. Um, and so that, that idea starts at the bottom. So it's important that as a director, I communicate realities of the pathway. Um, and then, but at the same time, create measurable goals for each for each player and each family, um, and and ask you know ask the questions of, of why why are they in the program? Well, I want to be a professional player. Okay, what why else? The development is a long term process. That for every individual player, there is a plan, and different players mature at different uh, at different times, and and you just got to trust the process. With the club investing so much resources and so much time energy in terms of each player, we truly have a belief that each one of them has a, a long-term chance. They could get cut. They could get moved to a premier team. They could end up being on a national team. And then we got to balance that, that mentality and how to handle those, that responsibility of representing your country. They could be getting trainings with the, the pro team or not. They could be getting a college scholarship or not. They could be talking with agents or not, and then all those situations in the pathway with each one being different in each age, we have to make sure that we're communicating very clearly with the parents. Um, and as the player gets older, they're becoming more independent. So with the older age groups, it's really more clear communication with the player because he's a young man at that point. And making sure that we set goals with them that they're responsible for, that the club is responsible for supporting, but that are measurable and that are realistic. And within, you know, within that process, by the time they're 16, 17, 18, they see it. They see when maybe they're going to get offered a contract or not, or they're professional bound or college bound. But guess what? We will never, our attitude is that anybody can make it at any moment, and it's never too late. We will never tell a kid, you're not going to make it. Because I've learned in this, in this business, never say never with these kids. There's late developers psychologically, physically, mentally, technically, tactically, so you just, we, we want to be realistic with the kids, but we don't, we don't take away their dream either. Um, but at some point, we do guide them in a direction that's going to favor them to have options and to stay in a pathway. As the path forward becomes more and more clear for players, what does the future hold? Will North America soon be at the forefront in producing world-class caliber talent? We are at the beginning of the story in the U.S., I would say, if I compare with other countries, our country is a baby, is a baby country. So it will happen, I, can, I cannot tell you when, but more and more we will produce uh, very good kids and high level players. Why? Because right now when you are six and seven years old, you can play soccer uh, pretty, pretty often. Uh, you know, these kids are growing up and now it, their dream is to be part of the first team of FC Dallas, of the LA Galaxy. So the fact that they, they can now see that there's an opportunity, that our clubs are giving these kids that are coming through the academy to play in the first team, it's only going to open up uh, the future more and more. You know, the game is, is, is at the middle of everything we do. The game is at the middle of our business in MLS. The game is in the middle of, of our development. It has to revolve around soccer. So I think that's where... Um, we, as a country, need to continue to strive to get better and educate ourselves and be curious to, be, to learn concepts from all over the world um, and not feel, not generalize this game. This game is, has a lot of little details and is very thorough 
And it's important that we, we answer for these players in training that we answer the questions of why, how, when, where in our training environment so that our kids can understand references and be prepared as they get older to be a high level player and a world class player. I'm excited that I feel like the next generation of, of coaches, you know, the ones that are MLS is heavily investing in, um, it's a younger generation. I think we're all hungry for knowledge. You know, we're here to get better. And when we get better, our players are going to get better, right? When we get these competitions, our players are going to get better. They are ex exciting times, you know, in this country. And I feel the, the potential to catch up to the rest of the world powers is there. The sooner the better, right? Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Soccer Center, Field 4 in Frisco, Texas. David Goss, Bobby Warshaw, Matt Peterson with you for this second half, the final broadcast of the day. Day one action in U-17 play here at the GA Cup. LAFC facing off against Flamengo from Brazil. 0-0 going into halftime. Bobby, one of the best games, one of the most even games we've seen so far. Yeah, really played at perhaps the highest level we've seen of our eight games on field four, David. And not necessarily just for the passing intricacies, but the speed at which things are being played. The, the ability to think ahead, the physicality. It's been a joy to watch through the first 30 minutes. Both these coaches a lot to say to their teams at halftime. For more on that, let's go down to our sideline reporter, Matt Peterson. Hey, thanks. We had a good view of uh, head coach Fabian Sandoval, LAFC U-17. 
means, he says, compete for every ball. Even if you don't win it, throw off the center backs. We have to get back to who we are. He repeated, have the courage. Have the courage to play our way. You are good enough. Don't be intimidated by the enthusiasm of Flamengo. And he talked about the interchangeability of the number nines dropping into midfield, leaving the space for the number tens, having awareness to have the front attacking players inter interchange. Thanks so much, Matt and Bobby. As you said, the focus less tactical and more about intensity, physicality, being the one winning those special 50-50 dual moments. Yeah, that's great reporting, Matt, because we remember that opening video of the game. It was Flamengo's pregame cheer, which is just fantastic. And if you have the full volume on, you hear how loud it is. You hear how powerful it is. And LAFC is really just 20 yards away when it's happening, and they looked over and saw it. And it creates an opposing figure for Flamengo right away. It took LAFC really 20 minutes to get beyond that. And you could hear at halftime the encouragement from the coaching staff to say, you are good enough. And there it is, that pregame chant. You know what the LAFC way is. Get the ball on the, on the ground, break lines, get on the half turn, be brave. So we'll see how well LAFC show their personalities in this second half. LAFC now going from right to left on your monitors as Mateus' shot is deflected. And Santhalia takes it in his hands. And Bobby, 25 mile per hour wins coming from behind the Flamengo goal into the face of these LAFC defenders. 40 mile per hour gust. The clouds have rolled in. A storm is on the verge of breaking out. And that is going to be even more to the challenge for LAFC. Iago and Diaz, it's been the battle all day. Sue Cup in a battle in that corner as well. And Iago comes away with it. And that has been the biggest example. It was what we saw uh, the coach Sandoval say. He said the first thing at halftime, he said to Jacob Diaz, what do they do to you every time the ball comes near you? They engage you physically first, and then they win the ball. Yeah, exactly. How can Diaz make sure that he makes first contact, put off the Flamengo center backs, rhythm and balance, and then go win it once he's created some space and contact. Flamengo takes the free kick quickly. Mateus, the captain, the number 10. There's been some great interchange between him and Silva, number 16. Bobby, one stays out wide, right? The other one floats in the middle, and then they swap. Seems to be a great connection between this team, knowing where their teammates are. And here we see Flamengo pressing their 4-4-2. They now have the, have the wind, wind at their backs. They've been known throughout the years of this tournament, yes, they play good soccer, but it's really this part of their game. The defensive solidity, the ability to press and force turnovers that makes them so lethal. Carbone. The center back plays it up all the way into the feet of Carmago. A great interception from Rosales. And now Flamengo are back into the attack. The big block coming in the end by Moyado. And we've got a corner kick coming for Flamengo. The first of this second half. And their first with the win going into goal. We, we've seen throughout the tournament how effective it is to whip the ball into that goal mouth, get numbers around him, make the goalkeeper deal with all of the different circumstances. Corner kick coming in. It'll be Junior to take it. Falls to the top of the box. Suk up now. Gonna lead the break the other way. He's got the run from Diaz down the line. Hernandez looking to close on him. Diaz gets it back to Suk up. A crunching tackle. And our referee in Shea Yinka Kahite right on top of that one. And it's the first yellow card of the game to Oliveira. And an immediate decision, no questions about it. But also Flamengo knew what they were doing there. He comes in hard. He's getting the ball or he's getting the man. He's stopping that transition. And a conversation here as yeah. well between the referees about whether it was more from a yellow to a red. It was right on top of where the fourth official is standing. Our fourth official, Muhammad Hassan, our center ref for the last game. And we'll see what the decision between him and Shea Yinka Kahite is for this one. This is a huge moment for this game. And if you're Jacob Diaz, you got to be saying, I'm dealing with this physicality. I finally get to break out. I beat a defender. I get the ball out in front of my feet. And I get a crunching tackle to take me out as well. And it looks like it'll be a yellow card, the final decision here. Bobby, you're right on top of this one as well. You think that's the right call? Well, you're always trying to figure out if it's a 
reckless or if it's endangering the safety of the opponent on that type of tackle, it's definitely right on the cusp. For me, it's a yellow card. Yeah. You didn't see stud exposed. You didn't see them coming over the ball off the ground. It was right on the brink of it, but for me, a good call on a yellow. It was the physicality was overwhelming, but it wasn't, as you said, a dangerous play in the way it was done. But the physicality, it looks like, is going to continue to ramp up here in this one. And an interesting moment now for the referee, because GA Cup is, yes, about the development of the players, but also for the younger coaches and referees as they want to progress their careers. And one thing we hear about them in their phase of their development, the referees, is that they generally know the technical components. They obviously know the laws of the game, but it's about the feel for it. And David, that call seemed to me to be... We're seeing the temperature rise. Mm. This is the one after the foul. We're seeing the temperatures rise. I know that it was soft, but let's slow it down and cool the engines a little bit. Mark Geiger and Joe Fletcher, two World Cup veterans here as the trainers for that next generation of referees. The ones we're seeing here, they've been in spots in the USL Championship, USL League One, NWSL, MLS, but they're still sort of getting their professional legs underneath them and these are high level games and same for the players different styles different elements when you bring in these international teams as well Rosales heads it down the battle in midfield Salas trying to switch the point of attack turned over and Mateus picks it up as a few drops of rain start to fall here 30 minute half for 60 minute games the final game of u17 play here in day one of the ga cup flamengo now knocks it around the back carbone and iago as diaz puts the pressure on iago wins it back for his team moyada not able to keep it for his side. And David, we need immediately to give, recovers. We need to give a ton of credit, excuse me, to Diaz in the second <laughs> half because the Here emphasis. Comes the attack though for LAFC, and the ball down the middle is intercepted. We have, we had noticed in the first half the emphasis was on Diaz. You need to hold the ball for your team. You need to bring players into it in transition. He struggled in the first half, but so far in the second half, he's done it all right. We always talk about facing adversity, rising to the challenge at GA Cup, and Diaz has nailed it through the first eight minutes of the half. Yeah, one of the themes that's big at this tournament is with this international level, with this high-level competition, is your ability to experience it, maybe struggle at first, but then continue to get better and figure it out as the cross comes in for Junior and is cut out. It's the same thing that will happen to you as you make your debut at the pro ranks. David, we've got a comment in the chat, and all I just got to say to Apocalypse Games to show your work. You're going to say Flamingo, the biggest club in the world? Show your work. He's going to show you 40 million fans and a couple of Copa Libertadores and a bunch of Serie A titles down in Brazil. He's also going to rattle off, I think, Vinicius, Adriano, uh, Renato Augusto. Bobby, who am I missing? Don't forget here? Toronto FC legend Julio Cesar as Hernandez can't wrap his foot around that one. They are one of the best youth talent producers. They're one of the best clubs at the senior level. And right now, Gabby Gold doing it for them up top. And when you watch those games for Flamengo, there's no much, there's no more emotion than the fans' connection to Flamengo. And Bobby, you're seeing it here in the way this team plays and why. You can feel every tackle. You can see how they move as one unit. And you can see if you're a fan, how you can feel a part of it. And you can feel that energy when you watch them play. I love that distinction, David, because it brings to mind this idea that every club almost emanates a concept, right? Sometimes it's methodical. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's intellectual. The word that comes to mind for Flamengo is emotion. Yep. There's emotion coming off everything they do. And that red and black really, really pops for them. So Synthalia will blast this one long. Nakagawa steps in. And Wilcott was trying to sneak that one through. Bobby, while we were talking, that break before... It felt like Steven Ramirez had a moment to play wide to wall to to uh, Diaz instead tried to slip it down the middle to Wilcott, but the gap's starting to open for LAFC that we hadn't seen in the first half. They are. I think anybody who watches LAFC regularly knew where that ball was going to try and go. Bob Bradley originally sold into this team, 
how often can we hit that gap between the center back and the outside back? They went for it there and just didn't come off. That one sneaks by from Benton. Diaz can't link up. So what Benton had a turnover near his own box to start the second half, trying to play through the middle, has since has made two excellent passes out wide here to open the game. So a yellow card to the substitute, Ramirez. And now it looks like a yellow card's going to be given to the head coach, Fabian Sandoval. So we'll just take a moment to write a couple names in the book. Three yellow cards over the course of competition is a suspension, but you cannot be suspended for yellow card accumulation in the semifinal. So most teams, if you reach that point, will have five games played in which you can only pick up two yellow cards to not be suspended. We did see a red card for two yellows in our first game here today for River Plate. As the River Plate players are sitting back behind us, Bobby, they know coming into this one they're favorites, and they know Flamengo were up there as well, and they are tuned in for this game. Vincent again up to Sukup quickly. Switching the point of attack to Wilcott. Wilcott surrounded by black and red jerseys. Wilcott drops it back. Mayado. And Salas has it knocked away, but as far as Ramirez. As LAFC now will recycle possession. Minton flying forward from the center back spot. Out wide. Suka picking up that space. He continues to battle forward against Hernandez. Plays it back for Diaz. The top of the box, space now. The shot coming deflected. And it'll end up in the arms of Santos. Perhaps the best combination of LAFC in the game. They win the ball. They combine. They go right. They go back. They go left. They find the overload. Great space. And then... Again, one pattern we consistently see from LAFC and a graphic created by American Soccer Analysis, a wonderful data platform on Major League Soccer. If, if you've ever seen it, you know how often they want to get to this spot right here, right at the top of the box. That is where LAFC do their danger. We see it at the first team level and we see it here with the U-17. Shout out to ASA, American Soccer Analysis getting in the broadcast. Just they, they, they do a great, great job. Graphics. Great yeah. graphics. Playing out the back, LAFC, they break pressure. And once again, it's Ramirez flying forward. Overtakes that ball. Moyado following it up. Out wide for Diaz. Diaz curls it, and it's too high for Jacob Diaz. David, the LAFC coaching staff asked their players to be brave mm -hmm. at halftime, and they've met it. When they build out of the back, Flamengo in their 4-4-2 pressing, and LAFC says no problem. We got this break line around the corner, and they're attacking the open space once they bypass the press. And Bobby, we often see in these games change in momentum, but very rarely do we see one team dominating and the other team able to, just through the way they play, but playing better, take over control of what LAFC is doing here. So often we'll see a goal against the run of play and a shift in the energy. But what LAFC is doing here, pretty unprecedented in these short time constraint games. And David, if we were trying to identify one adjustment that really shifted it, I think it's their ability to play forward first as soon as they win the ball. Matt made a great point in the first half about how often they were going back to their goalkeeper, and that's when they won it, they were taking the safe option backward. Part of being brave is, can I win the ball and try and play into the crowded area forward? Because if we do that, we've bypassed the counter press, and now we're able to go attack the space. Santos making their first two subs of the game. Seven subs available to these coaching staffs. This will be their first moment that they've used. So number 17, Souza coming on, and number 15, Silva. David, I love these moments from Binden. Because whenever you're a center back in that scenario, I always think of the American football play when you have to run the option. You're on it, and you have to look on the fly what's available in that moment. 
do I play to my left? Do I play central up the gap? Or do I play second layer? All based on what the two defenders in front of you for Mango are doing. And in the second half, Binden has nailed it pretty much every time. Binden once again back through the middle. Out wide for Suka. He has been the attacking threat for LAFC in this game. Sala stepping forward again, looking to slip in between the center back and the full back, and it doesn't quite come off. Yeah, but we continue to see Suka causing problems here and there. Get it on the left side. Sees the overlap come in, and as the defender is ready to drop for the overlap, takes it laterally inside, plays it central. But once again, Suka being the one to find the space and unlock the Flamengo defense. And a battle here in the box. Moyado is the one who finally comes away with it. One knocked down. And Olivero not able to keep it in place and on that yellow card. So it was Vitor, the number eight, and Silva, number 16, coming off for Flamengo. Souza and Silva coming on. Well, it looks like they'll be like for like changes. LAFC, the one sub at halftime. As we are midway through this second half, the final 15 minutes of play in this game and of our day one of U17 action, day two of the 2022 Generation Adidas Cup. David Goss, Bobby Washaw, Matt Peterson with you. We'll be back tomorrow with four games, adding Michael LaHood to our ranks as well. Bobby, it feels so good to be back on the sideline, back on these games, and these players have waited a while for this. A cycle that they lost the U-17 World Cup at their age group because of COVID. They've lost the ability to play games, but it doesn't feel like we've missed anything. These players playing at a high level here today. It's a joy to be back. These kids prepare really nine months for this event. And David, I would say so far it's lived up to it. The individual performances, the goals, the competitiveness, it feels good. Because of COVID, a lot of these teams, especially the MLS side, they will travel once or twice a year to play international tournaments. That hasn't been available to them. So this is, for a lot of these young players, the first time they've ever seen teams from South America, Europe, as well as Central America and Mexico. And David, you've had the privilege of doing GA Cup for a while now. You've seen the young players before others even knew their names. Zoo Cup now flying forward. Can't get his footing right on that cross. You had the opportunity to watch a Weston McKinney at a young age, a Gio Reyna, a Joe Scali, a Tyler Adams. So here we are in 2022. Who has impressed you so far? And who do you think you'll be telling people about five years down the line that you saw them when? I think definitely Micah Burton, who we saw for Austin FC, play really impressive. Nate Worth as well, who had a goal playing two years up for the New York Red Bulls in the last game Ed Davis was really impressive off the bench and has been for that Red Bull group as well we saw a player in Carlos De Luna for the Colorado Rapids yesterday who looks like a player who can break through to the next level Bobby what about you who has stuck in your head Micah Burton definitely stuck out another player for the Rapids Amos Glaw mm. really changed the game in the second half when he went up to striker and honestly, I, I can say, and, and we've talked a few times about the Seattle Sounders in 2019, first MLS team to win this competition with international competition. And it was their entire midfield that stood out. Yep. And it was Leva and it was Intensia who both play in MLS now. I think that Austin FC midfield felt similar. It was Ordonez. It was Ariano. It was Rodriguez. They had so many pieces, and they all seemed to link up, and it feels like a group that can all sort of progress to the pro ranks together. And they'll get the opportunity next year at the MLS Next Pro level. That one hit up into the wind. As it gusts back, the clouds starting to break a little bit, so we might avoid the rain. Although if I was out there as a player, I'd be unhappy about that. I loved playing in the rain when it first starts. It's the best feeling as a player. The more everyone else's top gets disrupted, the better for you. Huh? Exactly. The game gets better. Diaz, Jacob Diaz flying in transition. What a second half it's been for him. Sukup now. Plays it back quickly. Binden now under pressure. Moyado going to go upfield. Iago wins it back, but Sukup 
and he's offside, sneaking in off that wing. That's the LAFC run. Center midfielder on the ball. Here comes the wide forward. Diagonal across, splitting pass in between the center back and the outside back. It took 47 minutes, but LAFC got there. And we talk often about MLS teams recognizing what they're seeing with these international teams and adjusting. Hernandez has had the same challenge with Zuka. In the first half, he was the threat for LAFC. He was Hernandez was being aggressive and he was getting beat. You see now every time Suka picks up the ball, Hernandez giving him a little more space, trying to force him back rather than giving him the option to beat him 1v1. Pressure put on in midfield. A little bit of a dangerous tackle there from Moyado, trying to kill the play. This is the phase of the game, David, that we have to point out that we have seen this from Flamengo before. We have seen them on the ropes, but pretty much every year at GA Cup, mm -hmm. they have shown their maturity, and that this is the point of the game with which either they force a mistake or there is an individual moment of magic, and they find a way to win. That even though they might not look like the dominant team in the game, they have the soccer brains to figure out how to get a result, and that'll be the main charge for LFC. Can they match that maturity? on finding ways to get a win. And maybe even more than River Plate, who we've talked about winning. Flamengo, they stick to their game, and they play it throughout the game, no matter the flows and ebbs of the game. They always come back to what they do well, and hence they can hit you out of nowhere. So as we look at this goal kick, LAFC looking to play into the second layer, the gap in front of the Flamengo back four, and get as many numbers around this ball as possible. So again, can they make sure that there's not a header coming right back at them? As Jacob Diaz goes over the boards, he's oh, had mission a day. Yeah. Mission accomplished, it feels like. And Jacob Diaz will look forward to relaxing a little bit tonight. And it was a challenge for him, and he rose to that challenge. Bobby, and he will be one of the players that will shine, not just here, but Academy Director Tal Saldana watching. John Thornton, uh, Steve Terundolo, all of those guys around LAFC will see the way he elevated his game when asked to. Just over the head of Wilcott. Rosales heading it back wide. If we do end in a tie, it'll be one point to both teams as traditional, and we will then go to a penalty kick shootout. The winner of that will receive an additional point in the standings. Philadelphia Union currently at the top of Group A with their 1-0 victory over Weston FC from Miami earlier today out here at the Toyota Soccer Center. So we are six minutes of regular time away from that. Penalty kicks, five shooters, same as you see in any tournament. Best out of the five wins. But these two teams will think they'll have one more chance in it to keep us from that. Thalia knocks that one up in the air, and it'll be a Flamengo throw in. And you can hear the LAFC coaching staff telling Tyler Binden, you can do it. You can be the one to drive forward. He's already demonstrated here in the second half that he can take the ball, that he can make that choice on the option, go through his checklist. There he takes the easy. Camargo trying to turn in the box. Binden wins that battle. Sue Cut fluffs his clearance a little bit, and Carlos Diaz with the slide tackle up the line. And Bobby, you said coming midway through this second half when LAFC was at their best, you said as one of your benchmarks was they were no longer going back to the goalkeeper so often they were going positive. And now we've seen a sustained five-minute period where Flamengo's putting pressure on and how often has Sinthala had to touch the ball. I like your KPI reference there, David. Classic performance KPI. Yeah, You always have to have your marks. That way when we come into our mid-season, mid-term review for you, Bobby, and I sit you down. We can talk about the things you're hitting and, the, and your goals. <laughs> I just want you to get back. I appreciate that. Junior now pushing it wide. Right now, LAFC have a bit of a problem where they're stretched. Their strikers are about 60 yards in front of their defenders. These two center backs have worked really hard this game. And one of the challenges for them as young players is keep the focus. When you're a center back, every single play matters. So as the team moves forward in or out of possession, can they keep the team compact about 25 yards front to back?
Mango set piece again with the wind at their backs. We know the size they have. The center backs, Carbone, Iago, of course, center striker Camargo, all lined up around the six. Corner kick played in. The wind whips it along and pulls it right out. Bobby, we have not seen these two teams utilize the wind as much as we've seen some other teams throughout the course of these two days. We have not. The scoreboard today has been wind a lot, free kick takers zero. LAFC preparing their second sub of this game. To wait a moment more as we are back into live play. Sue Cup losing out to Hernandez that time. Carlos Diaz on the slide tackle to keep it away from Hernandez. Carlos Diaz was paying attention on slide tackle. Though. Best day of the week. Best day of the week. I don't know what team's doing slide tackle day every every week, but sign me up for that team. Any team Thomas Rongan coaches. He loves a good slide <laughs> tackle. So it'll be the substitute. It'll be Rob Wilcott coming off. And it'll be Adrian Weboo coming on in place of him. A lot of excitement around this young player, Weboo. Gonzalo Sagaris just calling him up for the USU 17 groups as a potential winger option in his group. And I think for Wilcott, a, a tough game for him to battle through. Bobby, but this side ready for maybe that that last infusion of energy to try and get them over the line here in the final few minute yeah, moments you always appreciate the work that a wilcott did in today's game because as a wide attacker in a game like this you're ra you're rarely going to get as many touches or as much space as you want but really you're asking that player to work for the team which is exactly what he did today i think overall wilcott shown well for himself Caught off Jacob Diaz moving back to the center. And their sideline reporter Matt Peterson tells us, and we'll see. Will Bowo go to that far right hand side and play in that natural winger position for him? We enter the dying moments of this one. Another yellow card coming out. Free kick coming here for LAFC. Bobby, how much do you commit going forward if you're one of these two teams as a player mentally? And how much are you trying to not give up that late goal? My guess is both teams, and this is where the instruction from your leaders and captains come in. In a regular league setting, it'll largely be defined in Major League Soccer if it's an intra-conference or outer conference game. Mm. If it's an inter-conference game, you're okay taking the draw on the road. Out of conference, you almost always want to go for the three points. I would imagine the coaching staffs for these teams will say, go for it. Show us the determination, show us the bravery to go for the three points in this game. Well, LAFC are showing it right now. Ramirez into the box. The slide tackle from behind does enough to push it away. The throw in. Hernandez heads it away. The big tackle from Moyado. And they bend in with the acrobatic interception all sprayed wide towards Wabowo and he's able to earn the free kick or sorry the throw in so it'll be a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time coming up here three minutes if we don't have a goal either way we are headed to penalty kicks for that additional point here at field four the Toyota Soccer Center Is there a hero in one of these two sides? A goal at this point. Put your name in lights for these two teams. Not the Las Vegas lights. Lights all the same. Bobby, we highlighted Moyado before the game as our star player. What did you make of his performance? What have you seen from him? Well, he hasn't been as notable as some of our other star performers, but for a person in his position, especially against an opponent like Flamengo, that's just fine. He's done his job. He's binded his team together. Have we ever seen LAFC really get 
get stretched? Not really. That's credit to him. Have we seen them have bad turnovers in the middle of the field? Not really. That's credit to him. So a person in his role is often for remembered for a subtle performance as much as a magnificent one. Flamengo threatening late on here. And they'll have a corner kick coming up, or deep throwing, excuse me. Camargo, the player we highlighted off the open. He hasn't gotten that big look since the first half when he hit the post. Header comes in, excuse me, cross comes in, headed up in the air. Bins in, heads it again. And the foul will go against Camargo. That's multiple big wins in the box from Binden and Rosales in this second half, David. And we know that if you're going to play for an LAFC, you're going to be good on the ball and you're going to be composed. But that second layer of being able to win the duels in the box is what's going to help these players get to the professional level because there are a lot of good passers. But do you have the defensive technique, the defensive determination to win the duels in the box that really matter? Dying moments of this one. Headed to a tie, which would be a penalty kick shootout for an extra point for a spot at second place in the group. One of the favorites in this competition, the Philadelphia Union U-17s, filled with U.S. Youth Internationals, with Zelensky, CJ Only, Zoros Barjan Darbo. They got the 1-0 win against Weston earlier today. This one stays tied. They'll go to sleep as group winners until tomorrow. At least LAFC play Philly tomorrow. Flamengo play Weston in their second matches. But Mateus wants the full three points. The captain has carried the attack throughout the day. That moment of brilliance there. Mateus lines it up. He goes for goal. And Sinthal is able to cleanly catch it. Poor decision from Mateus when it never really looked like the LAFC goalkeeper was out of position to begin with. He has plenty of options in the box. He has the win. A poor decision to go for the shot. And that is it. Our first tie here at Field 4 in the Generation Adidas Cup. One point either way. So Philadelphia will end day one in first place in Group A. But we've got plenty more action coming up right now as we go to a penalty kick shootout between these two teams. Five shooters selected either way. Best of five will win. If we are still tied, we then will go to a 1-1 shootout at sudden death from that moment on to pick our winner for that additional point. And Bobby, the group winners from each group get out into the round of 16, but the best second place teams also get out. So this point could be crucial for one of these two teams. Look there, both teams given that point and the penalty kicks that we had to. Bobby, you coach young players. What do you, what can you coach about penalty kicks? What do you say to them? When do you work on them? The first is the continued theme of trust yourself. You can do this. Yes, it's a big moment, but you are here because you have the ability, you have the mental perseverance to deal with this situation. And then second, technically, just pick your spot and hit it. Do not worry about the goalkeeper. You are good enough that if you pick a spot, you will hit that spot and it will be a goal. Do you pick your shooters or do you ask for volunteers? At this level, we oft we see that coaches often ask for volunteers because you want to see who steps up. You want to hope that players are willing to step up. Naturally, at the professional level, be trained a little bit more and coaches are more likely to pick it. But at this younger level, you want players to ask to rise. Uh, seven subs allowed for the two teams. You cannot sub anyone in at this point to take a shot. So everyone who was on the field when this game ended, they are the only ones available as shooters going into this one. As the sun breaks through the clouds a little bit, you better believe that, that young man, Jay Santhalia, will be a huge part of this. And Bobby, he made maybe one of the best saves we've seen so far this week in that first half. He did. Getting down to his left, he saw it late. But no problem. Explosive in his bounce. Good technique to get down with the bottom hand. So LAFC in their cream-colored kits. 
waiting at midfield as Flamengo in their black and red come out. Camargo hit the post in the first half. That save from Sonthalia. The two biggest chances for Flamengo. On the flip side for LAFC, Bobby, we saw some beautiful build-up, some good movement. And we're able to pull Flamengo apart a couple times and create some chances. The best one of the game maybe in the first half for Alexson Sukup out on that left wing. Neither team able to find the breakthrough. We did credit to LAFC first and foremost for matching the presence and the, yep. the physicality of Flamengo. We've seen over the years at GA Cup that Flamengo has their consistent style of play, and it's largely built on their maturity, their defensive stability, and set pieces. And the first charge for any MLS team is to match those. Don't worry about playing soccer. Match those, and then your game will shine. And LAFC did that today. And it's rare for us to see an MLS team that maybe doesn't start that way ascend to that and be able to find their feet in a game like this and not just stay in it, but control large segments of the second half. So it was a impressive performance, as you said, for LAFC. We saw their U15s dominant yesterday against Liga MX opposition in Leon. As our head official, Shea Yinka Kahide, standing with the two goalkeepers, talking them through the rules. Bobby, he had a huge moment in the middle of the second half. Yellow card, red card question on a tackle from Oliveira for Flamengo. That was really the one big test for him. He then settled the game down after that as our center referee, and it'll be LAFC to shoot first. And as LAFC takes this first shot, it'll be vital for his teammates to watch what the goalkeeper does. This first shooter doesn't know if it's going to be a goalkeeper who guesses or waits but everyone else behind him will. So everyone at midfield will need to keep an eye on what the goalkeeper's approach to this is. Four appearances for the Las Vegas Lights in USL already for the young center back. It'll be Diego Rosales to set the tone as the first shooter here for that additional point in the opening group stage game in Group A. Rosales steps up and he puts it past Santos. A nicely taken penalty, and to the earlier point, you can see the stutter step. He didn't want the goalkeeper to be able to bounce on the predictable rhythm of him striking the ball. He stutters. It forces the Flamengo goalkeeper to make a choice. It's clear that he guessed on that one, and once he guessed, Rosales slid it the opposite way. First shooter is the substitute in Souza for this Flamengo side, as you see the replay of that one. And beautifully finished in the end by Rosales. Sontal Sontalia now to face off as Flamengo tries to match Rosales in this one. First shot of this penalty kick shootout for Flamengo and he blasts it over the crossbar. He tries to go high. Anything above the midline on target is almost always a goal but you always run the risk of going high. He tried to get it up off the ground too much. And really, David, I don't know that we could put that to the wind either. The wind has largely mm -hmm. died down for yeah. these penalties. Really, that one was just skied. And what a game from Jacob Diaz. Paddling up top with two of the biggest center backs in this tournament. He had to deal with a lot in the first half. He came back. He was excellent in the second half. Can he score his penalty now? And he puts his over the top. So a miss back to back. And now Flamengo a chance to match. Bobby, he shaped his foot around it, but could not get his body over it. Yeah, effectively the exact same spot as the shooter before. You can see what they're trying to do. Again, if you can get it above the midway line of the goal, you, it's almost always in the back of the net, but you run that risk. And Diaz just gets under it and bends it over the bar. It'll be the left back of Ocalo to take this one. He was the attacking outlet throughout the first half for Flamengo. Can he even things up for the Brazilian side? Goncalo now with the star step. Sontalia guesses the right way, but can't make the save. And Bobby, that's what you're talking about, that mid-height and above. Sontalia guessing the right way, but too tough to save. Yeah, and the slowdown forces Sontalia to make an early jump. Once he does that, the goal is open. You hold your nerve and you knock it down the middle. 
for the other center back now, Tyler Binden. Another player who grew as this game went along. Second center back to shoot here in their first three shots. Trying to put LAFC back ahead here in the third round. And Binden able to dispatch his shot. And Binden coming across the hips. What we saw as a, as a right-footed center back on the left side. A lot of his passes, they were from his right foot to the left back in similar fashion across the hips. Just in the way he does for the PK. As well, they have CS first shooters. They lead once again. Opportunity here for Flamengo to match in this third round of shots. It'll be Junior to step up. And David, here we see Santhalia starting off his line and backing up. What you want to do as a goalkeeper is you want to feel as big and imposing as possible. You want that the striker to feel like the goal is tiny. Junior now to step up. Junior shot is saved by Santhalia. The first save of the shootout. And LAFC now, they have the lead. And Santalia got the bounce on it. We talked on the first kicker about if you change your rhythm running up to it, it doesn't allow the goalkeeper to time when you're going to strike it and get an early bounce. This this rhythm was the entire same, the full run-up. Santalia can understand when the strike is coming. He leaves at just the right amount of time and a good save. The substitute, Steven Ramirez, came on at halftime, helped LAFC take control in that central midfield. He steps up now to try and secure things for LAFC. A score here and a save or miss on the next shot. And LAFC earns that additional point. Ramirez has to do his job first. Santos looking big in goal. Ramirez steps up and he puts it in. The crazy legs, though. They didn't work this time, but we'll always shout out the crazy legs. So it all falls now. For Flamengo, as you look at that shot from Ramirez, one of the best we've seen so far. On the Flamengo number nine in Camargo. He has the responsibility to wear that shirt, play the center forward role, hit the post in the first half. And if he cannot score here, LAFC will win this penalty shootout. Camargo starting straight down the middle. Dahlia against Camargo. And the shot is put in by Camargo. He used every trick in his bag there, Bobby, to finish that one up. Yeah, he does the stutter step. He forces Santhalia to leave early. And once he does, he comes across the hips to the right side. And this is it, David. LAFC for the win. It may have all been for nothing for Camargo. Brian Moyado. The star player we highlighted at the start, the sixth, the tempo setter for this LAFC team. He scores this one. He puts LAFC in second place in Group A on day one. Moyado to step up. And he puts it in the top corner. What a finish. And LAFC moves to second place on two points. Flamengo sit in third place on one point. As Philadelphia Union will go into night one as the leaders in Group A, Bobby. What a day for LAFC. What a day for them to rise to the challenge. They matched everything Flamengo wanted to bring and grew into the game. By the second half, LAFC was the main aggressor. They were playing their soccer. And this extra point today is a fair reflection of the game we saw over the 60 minutes. Flamengo, one of the favorites in the competition against the ropes early, will be back tomorrow with a continuation of U-17 Generation Adidas Cup action. We've got a ton more games starting at 10 a.m. with Celtic against FC Cincinnati. What a day it was across the board. Phenomenal goals. Epic moments, drama, and talent and quality on display. For myself, David Goss, partner Bobby Warshaw, and Matt Peterson, and everyone here at our broadcast, thanks for sending, taking the time to spend the day with us. LAFC penalty kick win puts them in second place in Group A 2022 Generation Adidas Cup. Day one U17 play is in the books. Have a good one, everyone.